Today we're going to be looking at a poem from the Love and Relationships Cluster. We're going to be looking at Letters from Yorkshire by Maura Dooley. What do I mean? Romantic. Oh. This poem is known to be about the relationship between Dooley and her father. But the relationship between the two people in the poem is never named specifically which makes it more universal in its appeal. The poem describes two people, one who works in the news and the other who works in agriculture. Despite their differences, they stay in touch by writing letters to each other. The speaker describes a man digging potatoes who goes inside to write to the speaker. And then she questions if the man is living more authentically because he's outdoors rather than living in a city and experiencing kind of the hustle and bustle of life. And the speaker ends by reflecting on letter writing as a way of making her feel connected to a world that's very different to her own, a world that she has left behind. Let's read it. In February, digging his garden, planting potatoes, he saw the first lapwings return and came indoors to write to me, his knuckles singing as they reddened in the warmth. It's not romance, simply how things are. You out there, in the cold, seeing the seasons turning, me with my heart full of headlines feeding words onto a blank screen. Is your life more real because you dig and sow? You wouldn't say so. Breaking ice on a water butt, clearing a path through snow. Still, it's you who sends me word of that other world, pouring air and light into an envelope. So that at night, watching the same news in different houses, our souls tap out messages across the icy miles. Right, we are going to work our way through this poem. I will explain to you exactly what's happening bit by bit so you understand. And along the way, I'm going to select some of my favourite juiciest quotations. And by juicy, I mean quotations that have interesting language devices that you can give lots of interpretations about words that you can zoom into. So if this poem comes up in your exam, you are able to speak in detail and write at least three juicy paragraphs, long analytical detail paragraphs about it. The poem opens with the speaker thinking about the man who was writing to her. So she says, in February, digging his garden, planting potatoes, he saw the first lapwings return and came indoors to write to me. So the speaker gives the reader an insight into the man's life, even though we don't know the nature of their relationship. He is impersonalized through the pronouns his and he, like it's not specific, we don't know who he is. The active verbs, digging and planting, demonstrate his active life because he works on the land surrounded by and connected to nature. He's the first to observe the return of the first lapwings, which is a type of bird, after they flew away for winter. And he immediately gets really excited and he goes inside to write a letter to the speaker to tell her all about it. It's quite cute. And it says, his knuckles singing as they reddened in the warmth. It's not romance, simply how things are. So the poet uses personification here in the man's description when he comes inside and his hands are starting to warm up. It says his knuckles singing. Can your knuckles sing? No, they can't. It's personification. And it conveys the joy with which he writes to the speaker. It makes his knuckles sing. The colour imagery in red, red, it has connotations of love and affection and writing this letter obviously fills the man with warmth and comfort. Red can usually also be used to symbolise passion, but the speaker quickly shuts down this interpretation. She says it's not romance, simply how things are, which supports the idea of this poem being about her father rather than a lover writing to her. 
In the next bit, there's a deliberate comparison between the man and the speaker and the lives that they live. She says, you out there in the cold, seeing the seasons turning, me with my heart full of headlines, feeding words onto a blank screen. Hold it there, copy that quotation down. It's a good one for your exams. Let's analyze. The juxtaposition between you out there in the cold and me with my heart full of headlines at first glance could convey a sense of superiority as the speaker is indoors and the man is outdoors. Therefore, she is in a warmer environment and more protected from the harsh weather, which is perhaps a metaphor for the challenges in life. The direct address of you versus the personal pronoun me directly demonstrates the speaker reflecting on this contrast between the two of them. They are obviously living very opposing separate lifestyles. And if you look carefully, the words used are mostly monosyllabic, which portrays the simple routine and repetitive life of the man. Makes it look quite uninspiring what he's doing, simple. However, clearly it's not as simple as this because the sibilance in seeing seasons creates a really soft and quiet tone. Perhaps this is emblematic of, posh, the fact that there's a certain peace and tranquility in the life he has chosen to lead. He is at harmony with the natural world around him. Then there's alliteration of H in heartful headlines. And it sounds like she is breathing heavily or panting. Maybe that's like her yearning or longing to be back home, go back to that life that she's left behind. The phrase heart full of headlines also is referring to the work of the speaker. It suggests that maybe she's a journalist working for a newspaper because she's talking about headlines. And she clearly seems quite bitter about missing out on the real world and instead spending her time thinking of sensational headlines. The personification of feeding words onto a blank screen, she's not literally feeding the words, it makes her work seem like a really thankless task. There's nothing for her to show for the hours she has spent working. There is no reward. The screen is blank after she's feeding it. And she questions, is your life more real because you dig and sew? You wouldn't say so, breaking ice on a water butt, clearing a path through snow. The speaker's reflection prompts the next question. And she says, is your life more real because you dig and sow? So in other words, she's questioning whether he is living a richer, fuller life because of the nature of his work. And more importantly, is she wasting her life away by chasing money over nature? Let's copy this quotation down. I think it's a good one to analyze. The rhetorical question indicates her deep rooted insecurities about her work and her lifestyle. She can't help but compare herself to the man and wonder which life is better, which life is more real. It also to me seems like she's seeking reassurance. Is your life, she wants someone to say, no darling, it's not. The direct address shows that even though the man isn't within close proximity to her, thinking about him helps her to ponder on these deeper questions of life. So he's clearly very special to her. The phrase more real is interesting. Is your life more real? Because it raises these existential questions about the true meaning of life. And she's thinking about chasing illusory and temporary contentment like money and materialism over spiritual satisfaction, which is what you should be focusing on. But she can't help but be disparaging because she reduces the complexity of what he does to two words, dig and sew. And they are monosyllabic words, which conveys her dismissal of the simplicity of his work. You dig and sew, it's a little bit like, you just dig and sew, it's baby work. 
The speaker then reflects on the man's own dissatisfaction with his life because it's physically difficult, it's gruelling, it's arduous. He has to carry heavy things and work through harsh weather conditions, which she doesn't have to do because she's in the comfort of her home. Therefore, it helps her to think that both of them must have equal questions about the choices that they've made in life. And then she says, still, it's you who sends me word of that other world, pouring air and light into an envelope. I love that line. I think that line is beautiful. It's my favorite line of the poem. The speaker refers to the man's lifestyle as an other world compared to her own. So it's obviously a metaphor, it's not really another world, but it shows how alien his life feels to her, like they come from different planets. There is a vast disparity between their day-to-day -day lives. However, she romanticizes his world, glorifies it by using the metaphor of pouring air and light into an envelope. When he sends the letter, it's like he's pouring air and light into that envelope. His updates bring her joy and radiance into her world. It makes her feel refreshed. She can breathe and soak it all in. She gets to live that part of life that she is missing in her world through his letters. And that cements the importance of communication and letter writing in the poem. She says, so that at night, watching the same news in different houses, our souls tap out messages across the icy miles. So the poem ends with this romantic description of the connection they maintain, despite their physical distance and alternate life choices. Keep in mind, when I say romantic, I don't mean lovey-lovey, I just mean like beautiful, glorified. So it says at night, and that indicates the time when both of them get respite from their respective jobs. At night time is when they finally get to rest, they can sit and they feel like they still share a connection. The idea of different but same is explored through the paradoxical language choices. Paradoxical language choices. Even though they are living in different houses, they are watching the same news. So despite their physical separation, emotionally and spiritually, they are close and connected, sharing a bond formed and nurtured by the letters that they share with each other. Now let's go deep. In souls, there's religious imagery, and that demonstrates how their relationship transcends this world. It transcends the constraints of the human body. It is stronger than that. It is more meaningful. The souls juxtapose with the very modern image of tapping out messages, even though she is talking about letters, not about texts. But they're not just writing to each other physically. They have a deeper connection. The icy miles is another barrier in between them. She views the distance between them as a barrier in their love, like a cold and heartless enemy. But through letter writing, and by watching the same TV at the same time, they are able to subconsciously connect. The poem is structured in five stanzas, and they are all the same length. They are all three lines long. And this could symbolize the rigid nature of her life because she's fallen into the trap of urban work and given up the life of freedom. There's no freedom because we're working all the time, like me. The full stops at the end of some of the lines create these moments of like deeper reflection, implying that the speaker is questioning her own life choices. So that's your analysis. That's some good juicy quotations, language devices, structure points that you can talk about in your essay. However, when it comes to your exam, you also need to include something called context in your essay if you're aiming for those higher grades. Context means explain what was happening during the time the poem was written or tell me something about the poet's life and then link that to the message of the poem like, so why did the poet write this poem? 
What were they trying to tell the reader? How does it link to their lives? Some interesting context points for letters from Yorkshire are, Dooley has lived in multiple places throughout her life. She was born in Cornwall, went to university in York. She lived in Yorkshire for some years before moving to London. The disparity between urban and rural life is therefore reflected in the poem. Letters from Yorkshire was published in 2002. Many of Dooley's poems also contain the theme of communication, which could also be the result of Dooley's connections around the country. And there you have it. That's a full analysis of Letters from Yorkshire. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, and don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this series.